What's going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today I'm going to show you how you can get one of the best possible glow effects inside of Unity super easily using the URP render pipeline. I'm using currently using Unity 2021.3.11 20, um, and yeah let's let's get into this and actually create this awesome sort of simple but super effective glow. So I'm actually starting with the 3D blank template uh, URP template. I've added in a ground plane a floor uh, a wall and also or two walls and obviously the sphere we're going to apply the ball to there so we have all of this in place now the first thing um i need you to do is create a new material just any plain material by right clicking create and just say material and call it where if you want i'm going to call it glow just going to delete this other glow material here which you're going to see my sphere sphere has disappeared now that's just because i need to replace this with this glow material here now by default you'll notice there's a global volume inside of your um urp um template and here you'll see this zone called bloom now this is actually responsible for adding in all that glow effect to the actual element so what i want to do is make sure this on and the intensity is uh, about one or you can even go two but if you look here if we start messing with this you can see everything starts glowing immediately now i'm gonna leave this at one by default uh, but you can mess around these settings to match your game style. You also notice you have a camera and a main directional light. Now, on the main camera, you need to make sure that in rendering, post-processing is turned on. If not, in your actual game view, it'll look a bit boring. So here you can see it with post-processing or without. And without post-processing, the glow effect won't actually work. You also want to make sure under output that HDR is on or using settings from render pipeline asset and not turned off because that will also affects the glow effect now once that's all done we can go back to our effect here and to get the most simplest basic of glow what we could do is go down to this emissions here turn it on select this and just up the intensity on the right here you can see the more we up the intensity the more powerful the glow is now i find a two is real good glow for small objects like lights and you know general lighting elements now we can actually mess around with this color let's say make it red and you can see we have a red glow going on we could switch this up to yellow um, we can even go for a greeny color if we want to which is actually real nice um, and we can mess around with a bunch of different colors. We can go to pink. You can see all the different colors work really well um, here. Now, for this, I showed you a green, but let's just mess around. Oh, sorry, I just started. I showed you a um, a pink, but let's let's go with green for this. Let's mess around with green and see what green looks like. Now, you can mess around with this effect, and you can actually put the base color. Um, something else to kind of give the bottom element underneath a different now i find if you're doing some sort of light like a light bulb or like a lamp or something that's supposed to be a light you're better leaving it a white but if you're doing something else like a goo or something that you want to glow you might want to mess around with these colors to get it to look how you want it um underneath as well we're going to leave it white for now uh just for this tutorial now this effect is cool but it's not really affecting the wall so if we was to move this around you can see it's not really bouncing off the walls it, it it's just seeing the outer edge but the walls are staying the same color so what if you want to actually hit a, a, have light bouncing off the walls well if it's a moving object you're probably going to want to use an actual light or something that's um not going to just sit there so what we want to do is go to our sphere and let's just create a light and we'll say a point light for this now you can see it is real intense now you're going to want to mess around with these settings probably turn off that um intensity probably 0 0.5 not even that maybe three two uh and then we're probably going to want to add in the green effect there as well so you're going to go for a green um and we can mess around the intensity to get the effect we want so let's just say 0 0.25 i feel like that's a good color now you're probably going to want to get some shadows appearing as well if you want a real nice effect so you can turn that on and you can see now the, the light is actually creating shadows whereas we turn that off you can see there's no shadows created from the light um, so if it is something you want to um, half out, you probably want this. But remember, this all comes at a performance cost. So the cooler this looks, the worse it's going to run on lower end devices. But if you've got a nice beefy PC or you're aiming for high end things, then you can definitely add in these sort of effects. Now, this is cool and it works real well, especially for elements that 
um, you want to move around your scene. But if this item's net, let's say there's a light bulb in a corner or it's some sort of glowing orb that doesn't really move, then you're probably going to want to save some performance on this. And to do that, we can turn off this point light, uh, go back to our um, sphere here, and we're going to mark it as static. Um, and we'll just say no, just this object only. Um, and you're going to make sure that it has um, uh, shadow cast on because it will allow for the shadows to still be casted. You also want to go to all the elements that aren't going to move, like the floor, the um, plane, and the walls. Uh, and I'm just going to make those static as well. Now, currently, nothing's really happened. The light's still not bouncing off the walls, and it's not that great. What you want to do is actually go up to window rendering and go to lighting to open up this lighting panel over here now if you don't have a lighting settings in here you probably want to generate a new one just by clicking new lighting settings and that'll create you a lighting settings now you probably want to turn on real-time global illumination uh real-time environment and probably some baked gloom uh, now with this how do we get the light to bounce off the walls it's still not happening well that's where baking the lights come in what we're going to do is go down to uh, the bottom here you can see generate light now what we can do is we can just hit generate lights and that's going to start baking the lights in the scene and it's going to take any emissive texture like the glow we've got here which has some emission and it's going to apply it to the wall so now you can see it's actually applied towards now if we move this you can see it's actually just baked and it's just staying there this glow there's a green tin all along the walls let's move that back and there you go. Now, if you want to make this a stronger, um, so the light appears stronger on here, there's two things you can do. We can go to our lighting and dim it down a little to help with um, some of the lighting. Because obviously, this is going to be taking up a lot of the lighting. So if you're in a darker scene, you're probably going to want some more. But you also will want to go to your glow material and we can up the intensity. Let's make this something like five. So you can see a massive difference there. But now if we go back to lighting, and generate our lighting again, we should get a much stronger and much better looking glow hitting off the walls. And there you go. You can see the glow is a lot stronger. It's bouncing off the walls and it's looking a lot nicer. Uh, but personally, I think I prefer just the free element here with the lighting statically generated like this. It's a much nicer, not too bright and not too blinding for the user. Now we can apply this with our um, light as well. So we can actually turn the light on and set it to baked. We're gonna want this as static and then just hit generate lighting. And this will also generate the light from the ball as well. For some reason, my orb doesn't want to fully bake without having this set to mix. So I swapped it to mix and then baked the lighting. And now I'm getting a much better result here with the actual light pinging off the walls there, which is real nice. Now you've got a mixture of everything all in one, creating this super glowy effect screen. Now we go back to the game view. You can see what this currently looks like in game. Now you can imagine if this was an actual scene with some proper lighting and some proper de uh, details in the wall, how the light is going to be bouncing off, I think, which would look real nice one last thing i want to mention is you can see this like glare or this spectacle in the floor here um, which seems all right but maybe you don't want that maybe you want it not to do that and the best way to do that is turn the smoothness off and down now you can still have some smoothness so you can let's say we'll put this at 0.5 and you can see we get some sort of glow um, or some sort of reflection on the ground but we don't get a full on light spectacle. Now I find this to be nice at about 0.5 to give a nice spread of color which works really well. And that's going to be it for this simple glow tutorial in Unity. I hope I've taught you a lot of new things and tricks to do with lighting inside of Unity. If I have don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you're new around here and I will see you in next one. Peace out.